Are you curious how pilots harness the power to see through clouds? I'm just joking, we don't have any powers. But I will share with you how we do it. Welcome back aviators! This week I'm going to talk about the tools we use to safely fly through clouds. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you find this information useful. Let's jump right in. So the simple answer is we use our instruments. But what does that mean? Well, the main instruments we use are called the six-pack. No, not that kind of six-pack. This kind of six-pack. And the main instruments out of those six that help us fly inside the cloud and maintain the altitude and heading are the airspeed indicator, attitude indicator, altimeter, and heading indicator. Now out of those four instruments, the most important instrument is the attitude indicator. What it represents is the airplane's orientation in real time relative to the Earth's horizon. The center represents the airplane and shows the wings and nose relative to the horizon. Inside the attitude indicator is a gyroscope and it's super sensitive to any changes in pitch and bank. Therefore, it's the most reliable instrument to give you real-time information right away at your fingertips to show you where your airplane is at all times. Now, because the attitude indicator is so sensitive and that small ball is so hard to see when you make small pitch changes, the instrument that helps us maintain our altitude is the altimeter. The altimeter works just like a clock, where the small needle represents thousands of feet and the large needle represents hundreds of feet. So using both instruments together, the attitude indicator and the altimeter, we can achieve level flight. What about direction? That's right, we still have to navigate our airplane to get to the destination. This is where a third instrument comes in to complete the package. It's called the heading indicator, and it looks like a compass. You simply need to turn your nose on the desired heading, and off you go. So it's the combination of these three instruments that is the basis of instrument flying when you have zero outside reference or even during hours of darkness. Bigger and more advanced airplanes have electric flight instruments and they usually combine them into a single display. This saves space and allows the display to be multi-use, which presents a lot more information to the pilot than ever before. The basics of instrument flying is you use these three instruments to scan back and forth between them to make sure you're flying straight and level. You go from the attitude indicator to the altimeter, back to the attitude indicator, down to the heading indicator, back up to the attitude indicator. And you repeat this process over and over to make sure you're maintaining level flight. As you can see, this takes a lot of work and concentration, scanning back and forth, maintaining your three-dimensional orientation and situational awareness in space. It's for this reason that commercial aircraft will almost always have an autopilot because the pilot needs to accomplish other tasks, like talking on the radio, programming the GPS or flight management system, checking for weather, managing the power levers, and a dozen of other tasks. So if you've ever heard this remark, pilots don't do anything, the airplane just flies itself, then maybe this gave you a better understanding of what we actually do in the flight deck. Well, I do believe that's all I have for you today. Connect with me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Let me know what questions you want answered, and I'll see you next week. Uh -huh.